Better. How are we? Oh, I've he's been better. Oh, he's, thanks for asking. Well, you look good. Thanks. Maybe a, a nice crisp a, a beverage, beverage to celebrate. Long time. No. Chat. Oh, look at that. That sounded, that sounded crisp. Well, someone waited and someone didn't. Some people don't uh, like uh, delayed gratification. <sighs> the refreshing taste of success. The perfect paid spot, Coke and Pepsi. We're not fussy. We'll take money for anyone. Well, Maxwell, you're 30 now. I'm 30. Uh, and, and almost almost uh, poetically on cue, I got quite sick over you the did. last couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, we, we thought you had the vid. Yep. The VID. Turns out I didn't. You just Turns had a booby infection. Good old-fashioned chest infection. Just mm. uh, had to get something off my chesticles, yeah. which was nice. But some upgrades. Two hands, Sam. Two hands. <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. So many... Hand movements. Well, I thought that we'd get, uh, with the hand movement, the rapid hand movement, mm. we'd be a little bit... Gestational. Gestational. No, that's not the right word, because that's someone in utero. Oh. Gesticular. Gest- I think might have been the word I was looking gesticular. for. Gesticular. Gesticular. Okay, to gesticulate. Yeah, to gesticulate. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I thought with all our hand movement, mm. the sweatbands would help eradicate any excess sweat well it hasn't for me if on the keyboard the i should have got you a chest audio band. audio listeners won't be able to cut this but i'm a sweaty mess today well we did try the headband we have and it's it's probably sopped up about six to seven liters already i did say you could keep that as a gift i reckon i reckon you can have it back and we did put we've got a new light as well hence the sunglasses mm. it is bright in here i'll tell you what it is even with the sunglasses on it is shimmering well, the Pit Vipers, uh, shout out if you want to send us some more free ones. Uh, we didn't get free ones. I bought them. But anyway. Well, that explains why we've been off your feeds yes. for about two and a half weeks. It's been a long time. Um, I've just been like... <coughs> Good as start. You can hear, as you can hear, literally unable to go on podcast due to not hardly being able to breathe. Even now, it's probably going to sound a bit shitty. So if there's weird gaps are missing, it's probably me editing out coughs and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I did call him earlier in the week and he goes... I like good podcast, but at the same time, I really wish that we could just, if we could hold off doing a podcast for a week. That if, would if, be we, if we didn't, that'd be great. If we couldn't do that for a week, I wouldn't mind that at all. I think I got it from Darren Lockyer. But anyway. <clears throat> are you well? I am better than you are. Good. Physi- in terms of uh, immune health. You've had your inner health plus today. I have had my inner health plus today. Today? But, uh... I wanted to talk a pet peeve. Please, start us off. Well, we've got a big show coming up. Mm. You know, we always have a big show coming up. I I really don't know what to do with my hands. You know, like when you when you when you're on TikTok and they throw up like a like a motivational podcast, Mm. and the guy's always like, "Here's here's ten steps that you need." Just can I totally blow your mind right now? Yes. (laughs) Did you know that the sun? Is actually, if it exploded, the Earth would be eradicated. What? Isn't that concerning? I need to invest in Bitcoin now. <laughs> the hole in the ozone layer. We don't talk about it enough. Anyway, we. I think that we would be. Ow! I just really fucking, <laughs> fucking found myself in the eyeball. Then with putting the pitties back on. You didn't even have to go to Byron Bay to find yourself. Yeah, the pit vipers found it for you. Uh, I think that we would make really, really good. Bad motivational speakers. Well, let's have a go, shall we? Before we get to my pet peeve. My pet peeve is motivational speakers, I'll be honest. So, if this goes well, yeah, I'll play some music underneath. So, Yeah, yeah, okay. Think of your goal. Mm. Think of yourself in three to five years. Yeah. If you can't get there, yeah. get there. And, and time is just, it's like fear. It's all in your head. It's all in your head, It Sam. doesn't, the sun goes down, but only in our minds. Does the sun go down, Sam, though? It doesn't. Like if the sun's down here, it's up in Europe. It so is. So the sun never sets, Sam. Which and that's means, why you need to always be hustling. And that's why I'm always hustling, Sam. And that's why a work day should be 16 hours. I've always said that. Because I need, obviously, six hours to go to the gym, have a have an ice bath. Mm. Then I get some uh, red light sauna. Mm. And then I'm going to ice bath again. Yeah. And then do my breathing and meditational exercises. Yeah. But then I'm straight into that hustle again. Oh, mate. I'm talking... Uh, drop shipping. I'm talking finding a product online yeah. that 
is, you know, it's going to make a lot of money in three to five years. And, and Amazon ships it out of their warehouse for free. Exactly. So I don't actually move a muscle. I just sit on my computer and watch the money grow in. Sam, you've heard of the Wim Hof method, in. haven't you? The Wim Hof. Yeah. I've, I've got one better. The Wim on method, Sam. Because Wim's not even on. He's, he's not off. on, Sam. He's, he's off. off. He's fucking off it. And I'm on. And that's why I'm, I'm copywriting the Wim Hon method. The Wim Hon. The Wim Hon method. That's music. This, that. That's music this, anyway, the music. That went on for far too long, that didn't went, it? That might be getting some trims. Well, I think I was midway through and I'm like, fuck, I've got a lot of trimming to to make this a social clip. I'm glad that's your... Oh, fuck, I've really given that a nudge. I'm glad that's your problem now. It is my problem now because you'll just send me the raw audio and it's <laughs> up to me. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. Now, Sam... Oh, I still hadn't got to my pet peeve. What's, I was about to say, what is your pet peeve? Given so, that this is a music podcast and we've spent zero seconds talking about music this I've week. Got to, I'm just going to keep talking like this. This is actually really comfortable. It's, I don't like it. But <laughs> like, don't let me, just don't let it stop you. Well, I went to the gym. You're right. I'm great. <laughs> I went to the gym today. I can see that, Sam. Thank you. Hustling. I'm hustling. 28 hour days. <sighs> went to the gym today. Mm. Put the headphones in. Feeling good. Nice. And there's nothing worse than when your headphones don't work at the gym. Yeah. Like, it shits me to death. What is worse mm. is when one dies. Oh. Are we not talking, not talking like an over-ear situation? No. I'm talking AirPods. Not sponsored. One of them died. The other one was playing music. And you know when you're going for a run and like one of your nostrils or one of your ears is blocked? And it's like... Breathing, you're in. running in a circle because you just can't don't have the same aerodynamics. No, yeah. and it's like your breathing's. It's like what your ears are popping, then they're not. Then your ears are popping, then you're not. Mm. Fuck me, dead. I'd rather kick a. Anyway, when you were doing like, like one like single armed or single leg. I don't know if you're doing upper body or lower body, whatever you're doing. Yes. When you're doing like, like uh, you know, one sided exercises. Oh, I nearly fell over. Like, you, you, I was going to, one side's just fucking awesome, and awesome. And the other's just like, oh, no. Oh, I'm not feeling it today. <sighs> yeah, but that's just a pet peeve. I know. Nothing shits me more. But no, anyway, something that. new, Max. Something new, Sam. Well, you'd think after whatever it is, three or four weeks since we podcast, I'd have so much to talk about. I could, I'm going to do three or four. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back, Sam, <laughs> to a gig that I went to about yes. just before I got sick, which I was actually going to talk about. The following podcast, the following week. which didn't then occur, yes, uh, which was the midnight friends of the show. Oh yes, friends of the show. Uh, caught them in Sydney at the Enmore Theatre. Did you? Um, Enmore Theatre, a fantastic venue. I, I'm going to put it out there. One of Australia. I'm going to. Oh, it's top, Australia's top three. That's in Sydney City, isn't it? That's well, it's in yeah, it's in Enmore, the suburb of Enmore, just south of Newtown. Yep. Go along King Street and King Street splits and becomes Enmore Road and King Street and you keep going down the Enmore Road side. As soon as you started saying streets, you lost me. Yeah, look, I'll, I, I can point Why it out. Why don't I just map. Google it? Yeah, you could do that. Anyway, Jamie. awesome venue. Imagine like a big Tivoli with a bit more seating. Yeah, no, I think I've been there. Yeah, she's she's a ripper venue. No, no, I've been there. Yeah, no. no. And um, caught, yeah, caught the midnight there. Um, caught the was midnight inc- train. It was pretty incredible. I won't lie. Like, the they have ripping sax solos through so much of their stuff. Um, their, their touring guitarist comes out and just, just shreds for half of it. Um, there's no full lit kit, but uh, Tim, who we interviewed on the show, he operates probably like three synths, some roto toms, some some electronic like um, like just basically like pads that he turns into a drum kit, and he really goes for it. And he like with it, I, you know me, I'm a big uh, I love a live kit. You love a bit of percussion. Next best thing. Well, you'd hope so. Yeah, very, very good show. Highly well, recommend. If you well, hit. shout out to the midnight. Shout out to the midnight. Uh, for my something new, Max, mm. I, I also just looked it up. I've never been to the Enmore Theatre. Right. Uh, my something new, it's more music. I've been finally getting onto some new music. So, uh, as we talked about in the last episode, um, the first big new things, I think, is one of the, the words that I said to talk about your new music. What? It's a clip of the show. Don't worry about that. <laughs> inside joke and so inside, I didn't even get it. Uh, I've been jamming an artist called Renau. 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 How are we spelling that? R e n a w. No, R e n a o. R e n a o. Don't know where the W came from. Okay. Renau. Renau. So his song "Pressure." Oh yeah. We did a TikTok on it not too long ago. Yeah. Did terribly. Oh. Um, I've been jamming a bit of that. Bit of Rum Jungle. Yeah. I've got into the Splendor lineup a little bit. Yeah. Because I was a little bit harsh. Said it was shit. As I said, I don't think it's shit. I'd go to one day of the three. 
Day two for me is definitely holding. It's holding court. Holding court with that's the future day, isn't it? Yeah, but See, a lot of the a lot of the mid tiers on that day are a lot very strong. Yeah, I'd go for my girl Lizzie. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's about it. I think, and I was look. We, let's not go all the way down the splendid line. No, let's not. We've done it. We've covered that. But I was looking back at two hands. I was looking back at some some lineups over previous years, and it's shit. It's not. It's not shit. Are because, we fighting? <laughs> is this a fight? Are we fighting? I I don't think Splendor's had a headline artist that's like the, like year relevant since 2015. Well, Kyle is not year relevant, but none of them are, and I don't think any have been. Like, I think the closest you can get is like the year that like um, Childish came out or someone like that. Like. They were, yep. they were never they never do Splendor the year that they released their big album or like within the 12 months of when they released their big album or like have their peak. Yeah. I think the last artist that was that was Mark Ronson just after he released Uptown Special um, with Uptown Funk and stuff on it. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I think that, that was 2015. I think that was the last time that there was like an extremely relevant artist out, which is to say like, I think we just need to expect Splendor headliners to be... Irrelevant. Either legacy acts oh. or at the end of their world tour for their big thing, which might have dropped two years ago, two or three years ago. See, I hear I hear you. I feel heard. But all I hear is that the Splendor headliners are irrelevant. I would, I'm not saying they're irrelevant. I'm just saying they're not like year current in the current year that their thing. Isn't that concerning? No, I don't think it is. <laughs> because I think okay, he, this is a this is a it's sidebar. A, it's a theory I've been working on. Yeah, a little bit in your sick sickness. In, in my, uh, it, it came to me in a fever dream. It came to you in your mucus. Yeah. <laughs> Grim. The um, so like you know, uh, companies like Live Nation, yep, have been verticalizing their flow. So they own the venues. Horizontalizing or verticalizing? Verticalizing. So, so, up and down. so everything in the chain of getting an artist to a venue is owned by Live Nation. They own the venues. They own the ticketing. Mm. They own the uh, you know, the suppliers that help shift. You know, the logistics suppliers, the production suppliers, all that kind of thing. They obviously have the contracts of the artists. They have they have everything in the line to get the artist to you, and they have that all over the world. So, yes. like in Australia, they own a lot of venues. They own the Palais in Melbourne, for instance. They own a fair few others. That I, I can't think of top of my head, but they own a, a fair few other big ones. In the US, they own heaps. So many of the big spots are owned by Live Nation. Yep. If you're a huge company, so if you're a huge band or a huge artist that's yep. had, like just had the biggest year, you've dropped the biggest album, you've been biggest success. You can either go play a string of festivals around the world or Live Nation comes to you and goes, we'll cut you a deal where you make X much more profit because we make so much more profit with owning everything that gets you around this tour around the world. So we're making a solid chunk. So we'll give you a bigger cut as a touring artist. And that's why you get these world tours that like, Eras is a tough one because it's, it's tells her to specifically come out against this model. Yeah. So it's a bad example. But something on that scale where you have an Eras world tour... A Blink One Eighty Two World Tour that they're going on, Scissor, yep. Dual Leap is one. Like, yep. I'm not, I don't know if they were all run through Live Nation, but those companies can come to an artist and say, "This is the deal we'll cut you because we own everything in the chain, the supply chain to get you yep. in front of the audience." Well, now would you do that as an artist? Have it all handled by one person? You just rock up and play, or you and your team have to go and speak to 15 different festivals around the world, and you make probably good money. I'm not saying it's bad money, but you know. You've got to organize all that shit yourself. Well, it's a great theory. Yeah. We don't know anyone at Live Nation, but if you're listening, we'd love to have a networking session. Obviously, we're dressed for the occasion. But this is professional. This is professional. I don't know what they're It's on so about. high stakes that we're sweating. You are. I am. You're nervous. It's I like a sweating. first date. I am. Well, we had some TikTok chat in there. I think I'm going to park that and we can talk about that at another at a later date. I'm going sure. to take that offline. Please. We can do that. But before we get into our next topic of conversation, I do feel like an educational podcaster now with my hand gestures. Yep. <laughs> How long have we known each other? This long. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was this long. Oh, I knew you this long. You knew me this long, so somewhere in the middle. Well, Average it out. Well, it depends if I'm excited. Sometimes we've <laughs> known each other this long. <coughs> our friendship is a show, not a grower. Anyway. Anyway, uh, I want you to blind rank some bands for me. Yeah. 
Uh, when we say blind rank, do I? Are you sure I don't know the bands, or I just don't know what's coming? You don't know what's coming. Okay, I'm cool. going to give you five bands. Yep. You rank them for me. What's my ranking system out of five, out of ten? Out of five? Out of five. Okay, cool, cool. So you've got. Oh, I'm just ranking the bands against each other. Out of five. Right, cool. I'm right. But you I'm don't know what's coming next. Okay, cool. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. First band. Mm. Coldplay. Ooh. Oh, no way. Two. You sure? Yep. Foo Fighters. Four. You're pretty sure about this. Yep. You've played this game in your head I've got before. a strategy. You've got a strategy. Yeah, Righto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wham. 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 I'll put as five. As five. Yep. Okay. Hanson. Hanson. Oh, huge three. Huge three. Huge three. <laughs> you sure? Huge three. Lock it in? Lock it in. <laughs> Are you sure? She's locked in already. Flood on the dance floor. Yeah. <laughs> Number one always has been Sam. <laughs> He's knocked his mic asunder there. <laughs> I've knocked poor Michael. Woo! Can't be saying that one too loud. <laughs> well, thanks for that. That was fantastic, that section. <coughs> <coughs> Woo! Lucky I've got my sweatbands on. Well, after that, that was great. If you've ever seen a car crash, that was it. And boy, you know what they say? What's that? Steer into the corner. <laughs> I just pulled the handbrake. I was like, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> You know what? I'm not feeling it today, boys. Fucking bang. And then We're out. Boom. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> that part might get cut too. I don't know. I don't know. We're on a tear See tonight. how you're feeling. We're on a tear tonight, fellas and ladies. See how you're feeling. Nice. It's a chaotic one today, isn't it? It's chaos. It's a return. <coughs> it's a no, return yeah. to the fine form that we never had. Yeah. It's um, returned to our um, previous episodes that <laughs> magically disappeared on Spotify uh, once we started going video. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway. Yeah, we did have a conversation that has, is that is fairly music related. Yeah, for the first part of this, first time of this podcast, probably talk about actual music. Yeah, I think it's about time. I tried with something new, but you know, we obviously uh, like you know we like the great Ray Charles. We didn't see this turn coming. No, um, I asked a question of you, Max, to have to think and consider on. Yeah, when arriving at the uh, the studio mm. this evening, mm-hmm. the best live band or the best gig. Mm. You have ever seen Attended Been to I've excluded festivals from this I don't know if I that's, think that's fair I think they're unfairly weighted that. That's a laid, That's a future episode Keep your eyes peeled Yeah I, I, I've got a collection I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I don't know if you want to go Through all six uh, I had one Great Great So do you just go one for one And then we can <laughs> So we can go Yeah Yep I think you go five And then I'll go one And then you go one uh, I'll, I'll trim it down. I've, I've got them in, in, in. I've got some some highlights that I want to go through. Actually, I'll, I can think of a couple. Okay. So you go first while right. I brainstorm. All right. Cool. Um, look, I don't want to sound like a wanker, but I will. Cold play, isn't it? I feel like we've been to a fuckload of bands between us. Yeah, I remember back in my music journalist days, I made a list mm. of how many bands I'd seen in the space of I reckon, or until I was about twenty one. And I think I was in the 150s. Yeah, I never made a list. I would shudder to think of that though. It would be a lot, especially like that's not mm. a, that sounds like we you know fuck these wankers been a lot of bands. A lot of those bands were bands that sucked that we didn't want to really want to see, especially when we've been you know kind of it was our job to go see them. Yeah, it sounds like we're wankers saying that, but seriously, we did get sent to gigs for free to see shit bands. Yeah, and if that doesn't sound wanky, then nothing does. If your band was shit between 2014 and 2016, we probably saw you. We saw a lot of bands that didn't make it out of Brisbane. Yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. Um, all right. Who are saying? Here are a couple of my favourites. I'm so ready. I just knocked the microphone. Um, Friends of the show. Greatest hits. Greatest hits. Yes, yeah. you did. I was there. Yeah. You had a good boogie. It's a it's a good boogie time. It's there was shoulders. They're into like shoulder movement. With the crowd. They they do a bit of like an extended jam, but they don't overstay their welcome. They it's funky. It's fun. It's happy. It's hand gesture. There's a lot of hand gestures going on. There's some whistles. There's some fucking b- b- maracas and other various forms of percussion. <coughs> tambourines. A lot of tambourines. So maybe some the weird egg-shaking. fruit-shaped ones. Weird fruit-shaped ones. The- sure. Oh, um, cabasa. Is that a cabasa? The oh, backhand. But anyway, awesome. Uh, we saw them at Black Bear Lodge, intimate, 
you feel like you're in the middle of the, the vibe. Yes. Good time. It was good. One of the all-time great shows I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah. I've actually got another Black Bear Lodge one. Yeah. Towns. Oh. Friends of the show. Yeah. That was, I feel like, uh, it was the day after the hottest 100 a couple of years ago. I think it was. Yeah. But to be fair, anytime you see Towns, it's a great time. Always a good time. And Some of Adelaide's finest. I, it's like a it's like a Barossa wine. Aged. <laughs> oh, yeah. A Shiraz. <laughs> like a Shiraz. Mm. The the Towns gang, they yeah. oh. they know how to put on a show. Energetic. Fun. Sarcastic. A bit of shit chat. Bit of shit chat. A bit of great music. Bit of great well, that's probably the key thing. Mm. And and that's cute, you know. Both of these gigs we've been to together. Beautiful time. I should say, if you're listening to this, mm. we want to know what your greatest gig is. Yes, we do. Yes. Um, another on my list. I've said that. Yes, you're next. Uh, actually, I'll cut that because that was technically at a festival. I'll say no, that gr- time. great. Um, client liaison. Yep, I'll let you have that one. Now they, like, they do that. They commit to the bit. You know what I mean? Like, client liaison have a shtick. It's. They have, a stick. they have good, they have a, the, the good music, but they also have like their, like their vibe, their thing, you know, of being yeah, like yeah. kind of classy, upper, up like high fashion, like, you know, right chic. Up your alley. You know what I mean? Very me, obviously looking at this. Um, he says with pit vipers and sweatbands. What's um, wrong with the pit vipers and sweatbands? They're just too high fashion. What are you saying? Some have said like, it, they just like, I, I don't want to disassociate myself from the common man. Well, I'm actually thinking, it's just come to my attention that mm. when we interview bands at festivals, I think mm. we're just going to have to wear sweatbands and pit vipers. Sweats and pits? Yeah. And they're going to have to be okay with that. We we'll have extra sweatbands if they want to have them. If they want to get amongst it. Yeah. The pit vipers weren't very expensive. Do we need either. some 78 inch branded sweatbands? I think so. Because if we're going to hit the pit, it feels very uh, 80s. Craftwork. Craftwork. But uh, yeah, know, Clark Liaison had their, had their thing of... Being kind of high fashion, but kind of also mm. crass at the same time. It's their stick. It's their stick, indeed. The uh, long brown pointy thing. They have like one year their their whole set design was like an office. Like they had like water coolers and like plastic plants. And Harvey's like DJ setup was like on a Windows ninety five computer. It was sick. And then like another year they had, like they 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 build their whole theme around whatever that theme is the for that stick. tour, and it's awesome. I like that. They commit to the bit, Sam. They commit to the bit. Well. Speaking of bits, let's talk pits. Let's talk pits. Let's not talk bits. Let's chat to pits. But. So move from the, the central southern region mm. into the, the two uh, underarm areas. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really listen to them much, which sounds ironic given the things we chat about on our talk ticks. But uh, Parkway Drive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, that beverage is giving me some serious gas. We probably shouldn't be drinking beverages on air, but here we are. That's fucked. <laughs> and I hated it. Oh, I knocked it again. It's just some ASMR. Anyway. Um, yeah, I s- stop playing footsies with me off camera. Hey, Char. Who's Char? Char. Don't interrupt. They're having a really nice potato bake out there. Uh, but yeah, I saw Parkway Drive at the River Stage with a great mutual friend of ours. Oh yeah, um, who also plays in a band. They're not very good. I'm just kidding. Love you. They know it's just a joke. They do have a song coming out today, actually. If you're listening to that, so uh, look up the Virtues Boys. We love them. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Parkway Drive. Yes. Saw him at the River Stage. Yep. Didn't really know what was going on, but the energy was high. It was hefty. Mm-hmm. I slipped down the hill a couple of times, as you do. Everyone does. It's a Brisbane thing. Everyone does. And then at the end of the show, the encore, I mean, I should preface by saying metal shows at that level, there's pyro, there's fire, like fireworks trickling down from the top. But then encore, last show, last song, sorry, fireworks coming from the river. (laughs) River fire. (laughs) Very similar. Wow. Parkway fire. (laughs) You didn't expect that, did you? No, I don't. Not for a fifty dollars ticket at the River Stage. No, you don't expect a little bit of a fireworks show <laughs> off a, a city chat. Pow, 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 pow. But anyway, they're on the list. Right. Um, shout out Parkway. Shout out Parkway and uh, Virtues. Weirdly, um, another friend. I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm exclusively talking about friends of the show, 
Oh, well. But I have so far. They're your friends. St. Lucia. The, uh, yeah, that's definitely your friends. I wasn't there for that. I think they've only performed in Australia on one tour. Um, they played at the Zoo in Brisbane. Are they not Australian? They are not Australian. They're the, Well, the lead singer is South African, but they, they're from... There's like, a whole suburb named after them. I know. Tell me about it. Brisbane but uh, also, There's also a country named after them as well. There's a country named St. Lucia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the Caribbean, Sam. Is it really? Yeah. I was good at geography. How did I not know that? Well, Saint Lucia. Yeah, I'll let. While well, you're googling that to find out how things ah, go. Yeah. Gros Isle. Yep. Saint Lucia is an Eastern Caribbean island nation with yep. a pair of dramatically tapered mountains. There you go. The Pitons, the Pythons. I believe that the flag is like maroon with like a little triangle on it. It's blue. Blue is a triangle on it though. With a yellow, black, and white triangle. Yeah, I'm colorblind. The um. Anyway, the is it? Would you like a bit more of an explanation? While we're here, Sam, its coast is home to volcanic beaches, reef diving sites, luxury resorts, and fishing villages. Wow! Trails in the interior rainforest lead to waterfalls like the fifteen metre high. Whoops! To rail. As mm, that took a turn, didn't it? Which pours over a cliff into a garden. The capital, Castries, is a popular cruise port. Over I, to you, Max. I would stick to your day job. <laughs> I'm not very good at that either, so we'll just see how we go. The Anyway, the band St. Lucia, not the island or the suburb, um, played at the zoo. Um, they Did were supported they? by the band The Griswolds, pre-cancellation, yep. so that's okay. Did they get cancelled? Yeah, the, main, the lead singer did. He's uh, talking to some underage people, I believe, um, in the DMs. Touchy subject. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, anyway, um, and it was just an awesome show. Like, one of the, they're, they're one of those bands that sounds exactly like how they're recorded live. Mm. And just they, it was to a, it was a pretty small room, but they just nailed the whole vibe. Really good. Really Love good that from you. Yeah. Well, I've got one more, and you actually saw this band. Yeah. So we were at Big Sound last year. Yes. A few uh, frothies deep. Yes. We. Shuffled across to, what's it called? Well, it was called the Woolly Mammoth. It's now called the Mammoth or the Woolly or the main. No, oh, main bar was what it was when it was Woolly Mammoth. Ooh. Whatever the Woolly Mammoth used to be. I'll Google that while you're. Yes, but one of the most memorable gigs I think our little Amigo Three have ever been to, and that is Battle Snake. Yeah, by far the best band I have seen live ever. It pretty incredible. Like, pretty incredible. It's I incredible. Won't lie. Like. I cannot explain it. You just have to see it. But like, in terms of what I expected versus what I got, chalk and cheese. <laughs> Didn't expect much. Got the world. Got the world. Uh, I believe it's Wonderland now. Wonderland. To... That's weird. Yeah. But uh, incredible show. Yeah, you're not wrong. Six piece crammed onto a stage no bigger than my bed. Involved putting like faces into pyrotechnics. And... Literally. There was a uh, keytar. Yes. Um, There's a ladder. A there was a ladder. ladder. They were all dressed in white robes. Yeah, like some kind of like demonic priest thing. It was sick. Yeah, it was. And not to mention the guy <laughs> in front of us. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'd like to think that the band arranged this. I think so. So, for reference, Max and I are standing. I reckon upper step, stage right. Yeah, stage right, upper step, maybe like a six-inch step. Yeah. So we're facing the stage. We're off to the right, yep. off to the side, fairly close to the front. Yeah. But we're on, like you see in most bars, there's a raised level where there's some seats and there's some standing area just in front of that. Yeah. But there was clearly some spilt drinks. So. (laughs) Yeah. Most people will see where this is going. (coughs) But it was quite sticky underfoot. Yeah. And I think someone had, you know, bumped someone, beer on the floor, alcohol on the floor. There was, I reckon, a, a woman... And her male friend having a chat. And then yep. all of a sudden, this other guy comes over. I think he was pretty eager to have a chat with this woman. You know, see where the night took them. You know, uh, a little bit of love in Wonderland. Uh, anyway, he's he's jumped onto the, the little raised shelf. Yeah. And if you've ever seen a man trip for about 20 seconds. <laughs> it was like a cartoon. Like, <laughs> like his legs are like, just like flailing. <laughs> It was by far the funniest thing I have ever seen. Not only did he slip for 20 seconds with 
the comedic music over the top. He didn't fall forwards. <laughs> he fell backwards on his ass. Literally ass over tit. <laughs> oh, Max and Incredible. I had to <laughs> turn around <laughs> and cry laugh. And then we got in trouble by our respective partners. Yeah. For being For laughing directly laughing in this man's face. <laughs> I want if you ever see me at a gig. This goes for you. This goes for anyone who's watching. And I go A over T. You have my <laughs> express permission to laugh directly in my face. Oh, and likewise. Yeah. Because when you reach that level of embarrassment, oh, too good. There is no coming back. <coughs> you Incredible just have stuff. to own it. It was seriously so. Shout out Battle Snake. Yeah. I think next time we see them, I'm just gonna spray water on the floor. I'm just gonna push someone over. <laughs> Just run into the pit and push them. And not even in the pit. Just at the bar. Just at the, just <laughs> to the side. Just in the mingle area. Hi, how are you? What Bang. I think we referred to as um, chaperone dad area last week. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This band's all right. Because not- we, like, we, just to clarify, not that we, it wasn't that we didn't enjoy the band and we didn't want to be in the pit. We had literally no idea what we were going to see. No, no. And it was, wasn't until about halfway through the show that we were all like, what in the fuck is happening here? Like, what the fuck is going way. on? This is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And shout out to the lead singer as well. Yeah. I don't know their name. I don't know what their go is. But they gave it a fucking nudge. They fucking sent it. Fuck there was yeah. a lot of tongues out. Lots of... Yeah, it was quite demonic in hindsight. Mm. But it was good. It was nice. Also, shout out to the presets as well. Yeah, fuck yeah. Also, shout out to Coldplay, who are my number one. Um, fucking incredible gig. Every time. Yeah, well... Awesome. Yeah, get over it. Uh, you you should the go pre- see them when they come here in a couple of months. Maybe. I don't have six hundred dollars, but shout out to the presets. We saw them at Fridays, and yep. I, I couldn't wait for them to come on. <laughs> you, you kept being like, "What are they getting on?" So for yeah, for reference and context, probably because that's an important thing. Max invited myself and a, a few close friends and and partners to see the presets uh, at a gig in the Brisbane city. They were just DJing one. Shout night. out Fridays Riverside. Shout out Fridays Riverside, uh, and then. I was told they were getting on at about 9 o'clock, I reckon. Yeah. And it was about 8.30. We'd had a couple of drinks. Yeah. The night rolled on. It was 8.50, 8.55. It got to about 9.03. Mm. And the same DJs were on. And I, I turned to Max. I was like, are they, like, what's the go here? Are they coming on? And then I thought it was strange because at about 8.50, the DJs on at the time covered my people. Yeah. And then I think 8.55, This Boy's In Love was covered. I was like, that's really bold. It's a bold move playing... As an opener. The preset songs to play as an opener. a cover of the headliner song. Mm. Got to about 9.30. I was like, fuck me. Like, have they forgot to come? Has their flight been cancelled? Like, what's going on here? Because I didn't recognise many other songs. Lo and behold, the night ends. I go, fuck, that was disappointing. Where were they? <laughs> they are on the whole fucking time. Uh, but every time you let me like, are they coming on? I was like... He on crack. They were on the whole time. No one told me. Here I am thinking the opener was covering the headliner. Some bold bloody DJ covering my people as the presets are about to come on. And I was watching the presets play my people and I had no idea. They did it well though. It was a good show. I mean, they covered it pretty well. Yeah, what a fucking stitch up. Anyway, goes to show. Looks at... So you're not there. Get there. I think... I think we... we we don't have a, an interview this week, I believe. If if there's an interview after this, it means I have pulled my finger out of my fucking ass and got some work done and sent some emails. But pull your finger out of your fucking ass, mate. At this current point in time, I think it's just us being beautiful. So I suppose cute. Where can people <coughs> tell us what gigs they've been to? Their favorite gigs at um, seventy eight amped on everything, mate. On everything, everything. TikTok, mostly TikTok, Bebo, and Instagram, MySpace. Let's not fuck around with the list. All right. Just Instagram and TikTok, really. Yeah. Don't waste your time. Then just subscribe on Spotify. That's all you need to do. Yeah, subscribe. Oh, and probably on YouTube as well. Rate and review. Probably Rate. goes all right. Yeah, well, let's not overcrowd them. If we could... If you're listening... Yeah, two Walk tasks. away with two things. Two pieces of homework. <clears throat> Are you, oh, me first. Yeah, okay, yeah, you, you first. had to point at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd say subscribe on YouTube. Yep, that's a good one. And... No, I take that back. That's a third. That's a later. Subscribe on Spotify. Yep. And then follow us on TikTok. Yeah. And then if, you, if you've if you done that and you think, oh, I've got five more minutes before I, fuck I love before math starts. Yeah. Bang on a YouTube. Yep. Hit the subscriber there. 
and probably Instagram as well. I mean, if you're on TikTok, may as well just open Instagram. And if you're listening, if you haven't seen us on YouTube, if you don't know what our faces look like, if you don't, know, well, if you haven't been able to this associate the faces to the names to yeah. the voices, <laughs> jump on YouTube. Have a little squizzy. Have a little squizzy Maguire. Ah, oh, that's that's clever. Thank you, thank you. But it's time for social club. Social club. Fuck. It's time for what, Sam? It's time for vinyl club. It's, uh, so fuck off the camera. Camera's off. The pities are off. The, pity. the pit vinyls. Oh, actually, yeah. There's no point. We're not on. Oh, that's co- no. I need them back on. What do you reckon pit vinyls could do? Could, like, if we could get some like actual vinyl uh, material and make sunglasses out of them, have some pit vinyls. Well, I think if we keep wearing pit vipers, we'll get sponsored by them eventually. Um, anything fun in the in the um, social this week that we need to do some? So the, the, like, essentially, I think the, the first part of Vinyl Club as as like a letters segment has been quite good. Are we on? We, we, yeah, we've been on since you got up. Oh wow! So you got me even going. Um. Um. Yes, I did. Um. I'm just gonna bust out the uh, the old correspondence from our from everyone this week. Our foreign correspondent, Max Higgins, has the floor. G'day, Sam. Oh, I'm here in Tehran where there's currently a revolution undergoing <laughs> and uh, things are not so good if you happen to be part of the Shah's regime. And I was told I had to wear these bulletproof vests. I've been hung twice. Oh, you've done well to report on it. Well, I throw it's a little croaky. Well, I threw it's a little croaky. Now you as, had an abs. Oh, sorry. No, please, as you were. As the flu epi- <laughs> epidemic, epidemic, I have listexia. You had some absolute fucking screamers, Sam, this week on the uh, on the TikTok. I wanted to just uh, go to some some correspondence related to your splendor lineup predictions. <laughs> Gee whiz, I copped some heat on that, didn't I? Well, you copped some heat. You also copped some. You got some. You copped some love. You got some right as well. Yeah, I know. Shout out to you. You were feeding me the bands, and I was just the people don't enjoy that because that makes it also mean, means that I got something wrong. We don't like we can just. Well, I predicted that there'd be a heavy band. Polaris was on it. Yes, we predicted Kylie Minogue. G yes. headlines. Yes, we predicted. Well, I th- Lizzie McAlpine. Oh, I didn't predict her. And your second one, you did, didn't you? No. Oh, I didn't predict her. I thought you did in this one, in this follow-up video. No. Oh, actually, no, I didn't. Anyway, that's... Look, let's... But uh, I predicted, as a joke, all the teenage... <coughs> all the teenage And bands. you got a couple of them I right. got Teen Jesus and the Gene Teasers. I got Teenage Jones. Done. And that's pretty much it. I got most of the Triple J bands. Because you just point your finger and hope for the best. I I want to shout out some, so some of the um, responses on our... Yes. To, to this. Are quite, some of them are quite funny. Um, like first of all, shout out to Elizabeth Pike, Carly for the win. Got it right. Well done. That's nepotism. Uh, Luke, I don't know who Luke is. Huge swinging for the fucking fences with Kid Cudi, Florence and the Machine, nothing but thieves, the killers, Lana Del Rey and Conan Gray. But I'll give it to Luke. Got baby no money. Teddy swims. Correct. Yes. No. Teddy swims isn't on it. Is it? No. Baby No Money It Is. Swim is on it. Oh, uh, my... Sorry, my... So, this is what I don't understand, right? Yeah. Tenacious D. Yeah. Teddy Swims. Yeah. And Conan Gray. Mm-hmm. All tour in Australia that week. Mm. Surely the people at Splendor were like, you know what would make sense? But it, this might be related to my, my theorem, Sam. Your theorem. My theorem. Yes. These artists are making more money doing a, a, a headline tour. Well, yes. Um, Fascinating. The there's some other people in here who put out some some wild choices. R.L. Grime, mm. <clears throat> haven't heard of from R.L. Grime in about ten years. So I'm going to say not a name I've heard of in recent memory. Uh, Kira Charlie smashed it with Rum Jungle. Yeah, she was Nail pretty sure of that. Meat well head. Um, ASAP. Nah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Um, Sorry, mate. But you you had some screamers there. Yeah, I was pretty happy with it overall. Uh, shout out to the uh, Splendor team. Looking forward to. Receiving those free tickets. Shout out to Jack Murphy, who's uh, alleged leak on Reddit was Kylie Minogue. <coughs> <coughs> Correct. <coughs> You're right. No. <laughs> Dua Lipa, very incorrect. And the Black Keys, very incorrect. Well, yeah. I thought Dua Lipa was a bit bold. How's that video? So that video that Triple J put up, mm. blind reacting to the Splendor lineup. With Conchetta and Dave Woodhead. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I commented on it as 78 Amps. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. I think I said, oh my God, Spacey Jane Hilltop Hoods. I didn't see that coming, in quotation marks. Yeah. 
I reckon we got about 60 likes. Oh. Then all of a sudden, comment was gone. I was oh, like, no. You've I been had. Like, oh, my God. Silenced. ABC, the ABC have come for us finally. Uh, it was about time. The King's Meal's come for you. But I think they received so much negative commentary, they deleted the entire video. Here's the thing, right? I Look, let, we're not going to get back into it. I genuinely don't hate the lineup. It's not that bad. I would go on the Sunday. Polaris is playing. There's a few good ones there. Kylie Minogue. We ha- we laugh. Easily one of the most relevant Australian artists right now. He's like no no joke. Because of Padum Padum. Padum Padum was genuinely one of the biggest songs of last year. It's about a year. It might not have been in our circles, but it was huge. It won a fucking Grammy. Wow. Like, she's one of the most relevant Australian artists of the, at the moment. So we laugh, but the, it's true. I'm not. Do you hear me laughing? I see it. I saw you laughing, Sam. Anyway. Okay, Stevie. Um, last, yes, last Vinyl week. Club. It was, back. it was a fair while ago. I sent you some homework. You did? Um, you had plenty of weeks to, to get through this. Yeah, and I listened on the way to the studio. Thought you might have done that. Yeah. That's why I wrote it in the agenda, just to make sure that you remembered. No, I did listen to it. Uh, churned through it. Yeah. Uh, Green Day's first major label release, 1994. Dookie, dookie. Uh, home of such hits as Welcome to Paradise. Basket around, Case. Basket Case. Tell me your thoughts, Sam. Well, those three were probably the strongest songs for me. Okay. Wouldn't believe it. Yep. Uh, I thought overall mm. for 19... You've got to remember when you listen to these things. Mm. It's of a time. 1994. This is very Great new. Year. This is a very new sound. So I can see from this album yeah. how pop punk came to be. It's, it is really like the blueprint for every pop punk album that came out between then and like 19... 19- no, 2004. Yeah. Yeah. It's fast. It's pretty simple. Yep. And there's still like some melodic bits in there. Like there's yeah. a lot of oohs and ahs and, you know. There's about three songs that all sound the same at the yep. start. Yep. They like the snare hit then into the song. Yep. Yeah. It's like burn out, have a blast and then. Chump. Is Chump in that, in that Chump, trio? Maybe. Let me have a listen. Mm. Is that yeah yeah no mm. it's the snare hit into the sorry can't turn it off he's, how do you turn he's, this he's having himself quite the mare here how do you turn this bastard off it's the snare hit into the song so those three songs I don't remember which ones they were but they played consecutively yes and I first three I believe yeah and I, well pew, pew, pew. no it was one three and then there's another one right sorry two wasn't it but sorry yeah, as you were you know Plucking hairs there. Uh, and I thought, geez, this is repetitive, isn't it? Yeah. I think music has evolved mm. since then. Yeah. You'd hope it would. It would be weird if it was still 1994. Yeah, it would be. Uh, but overall, I think it was a foundation album mm. for the punk scene today. I think so. Apart from that, I didn't really listen to it. I want to I want to get your thoughts on Longview, the song Longview. Yes. Now, specifically. Specifically, because I know... That you would have listened to it. I actually did. Yeah. What were your thoughts on Longview? Not much. Not much? <laughs> really? Interesting. So I... <clears throat> my ears pricked up. Because it's the... Like, for the listeners who don't know the album that well, I would say it's musically, sonically, the most different song on the album. Like, it sort of is... All the other songs are what you would pretty much expect from a pop punk album. The... The weird bass line intro, yeah. it's got like a certain, like a, it's kind of swung. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit swingy. It's almost like Rise Against have taken that riff and been like, let's make our whole career around that. Yeah, I can see that. It's like the, yeah. Mm. I think it's different for Green Day. Mm. For Green Day. Green Day. For Green. But overall, like, I wasn't a big Green Day fan until American Idiot. Yeah, so. that's fair enough. You know, that but, might come up on a future vinyl club. Do you have it on vinyl? Well, maybe. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't think I do. I don't. I don't think I do. But maybe if I get it, I might bring it in. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I've brought a vinyl in. Yeah, please. Homework. I love getting some homework. I feel like I'm back at school. Well, Mr. Higgins, your report card is disappointing. <laughs> I've heard that before. Yes. Yeah. Just It's, it's disappointing. Potential. Oh. Unachieved potential. Well, I've got... Uh, friends of the show, Towns. Oh, I've met, I've met them. 
Have you? Yeah. You know famous people? Oh, do I ever? Wow. I know, Sam Muggleton. Which version? <laughs> the famous version. Oh, yeah. Taylor's version. Taylor's. So I've got So Far and Television by Towns. Limited release vinyl. Limited, very. I'm actually quite stoked on this one. Niche. Niche, quite. But friend of the show. So this has, let me run it through. Television. I don't mind. Sun. Uh, hush. Mm. Bleach. Mm. Some pretty angsty, uh, punky vibes. Yep. And then So Far. Is there other songs so far? Safe to Stay. Great song. Great song. Swimming. Mm-hmm. Boring. Mm-hmm. Stardust. Mm-hmm. Then a couple of B-sides. <laughs> I love a few B-sides. But... Essentially, it's their first two EPs back-to-back. Yeah, it is. Yeah. On vinyl. On vinyl. Spectacular, really. And uh, do you have any thoughts that, you, that I should go... Like, obviously, I've heard most of these songs before um, well, you know, in various oh, forms. Do you want my favourite picks? No, what I was going to say is, like, do you, have, do you have any, like, preparatory notes before I go in and listen to this and come back with my thoughts? Uh, well, if you're going to listen to television... Mm. Be a bit sad. Okay. If you're going to listen to So Far, mm. be a bit happy. Okay. Well, that's my picks. Every uh, possible mood. Yeah. Highs and lows. Yeah. Listen on one in the morning, one at night. Fair my enough. My picks, Safe to Stay. Yeah. Great song. And I Don't Mind. Yeah. Okay. Another great song. I will look, I'll, I'll report back next week. Um, listen to the songs that you know already. Yeah. Because you know pretty much all of them. That's fair. Yeah. Sam, any, any vinyl thoughts? Vinyl thoughts. Uh, be nice to your mother. Thank you. I'll, 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 I'll keep that in mind. Not just yours, everyone that's listening. Be nice to your mother. Be nice to all mothers. You popped out of her, so be nice. Sure did. Sure did. As I recently mentioned in a speech. <laughs> yeah, you did. It was, it was quite bold. Yeah. I also spoke in depth to your mother about my father-in-law. Oh, that's good. They went to school together. Yes, I have heard about Small that. world, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, crazy how it works. So I learned a lot. Yes. Um... My vinyl thoughts, Sam, I, 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 I have had a birthday recently. You have? Uh, I, I went and purchased myself some vinyl, uh, a bit of a present from me to me. Yes, I like that. Uh, I bought uh, <clears throat> I bought the, the Beatles, number ones. Why? Why? Because it's the fucking one that has probably 10 of the greatest songs ever written on it, Sam. Incredible it's stuff. It's Tiptoe Through the Tulips on it. Yeah. Wow. And Fireflies by City. Wow. Huge. Shake it? Yeah. So that's station. three of 10 already. Yeah, the Beatles were prolific. Fuck. Did they have um, good girls gone bad? Yeah. Fuck. You'd yeah. be surprised what they wrote. No wonder. Um, oh. And uh, Thriller by Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. Nice. The Japanese pressing, though. Oh. So, I'm, I'm interested to see how that comes out. How do you think that would sound, Sam? <laughs> Anything you want to say there? Do you want to say the name of, name of any, any albums? No. No. Probably a wise choice. <laughs> um, and also, I, I picked up... <coughs> The DMAs, uh, their first EP, um, they, they 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 put that and a selection of other B sides and offcuts um, on vinyl and uh, dropped that as a limited release, and I picked that up. So similar style to our very similar style, our friends in town, very similar style. And DMAs, I, I believe I went to probably their third or fourth show, and when they only had that EP, and that EP got a very heavy rinse in my playlist in 2014. Wow. Where did you go to purchase these vinyls? Uh, I was at Rocking Horse in the city. Mm. Yeah. But I want to shout out my, my very lovely girlfriend um, who, who gave me a, a record um, for my birthday. Yes. Oh, I'm going to kick the power out there. Um, not just any record, a record specific to me. The record. The record. Wow. Um, it's, a, it's a record of a variety of songs that she knows that I've liked through my life, she got it, went to a bespoke record printing, publishing, pressing, vinyl pressing company, a vinyl pressing company, yes, uh, and got uh, said hey, here are I think ten songs. They they printed it out, and I have a record that covers essentially very very various points of my life. So there's things like this the uh, song from the first date that, her, that she and I went on. Um. Song, are you songs from the year that I was born? Um, I think my like the song that they played at my high school graduations on there, like all sorts of stuff. Niche, yeah, very. Well, that's very romantic. It's very it? romantic. Shout out your girlfriend. Shout out to a rename, <laughs> rename, <laughs> rename, Thanks, Renee, <laughs> rename, Mainless. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. 